Hello and welcome to Physics. Today we're going to continue with our emphasis on strategic reading and specifically looking at the SQ4R strategy. Today we're going to look at chapter 15 which is stationary waves. The objectives for this chapter or this video is to learn how to apply the SQ4R strategy, then to demonstrate and explain the formation of stationary waves to identify nodes and antinodes on a stationary wave and to determine the wavelength of sound waves using stationary waves. Okay, so what is the SQ4R strategy? It uh, stands for a S, a Q and four R's. So SQ, R, 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 R and those symbols stand for survey, question, read, retrieve, record and rehearse. So how does this work? The purpose of the survey is to get the big picture idea of what the content is about. So you look at what the big picture is. Once you've surveyed, you go and you turn your sta some statements into questions. The purpose of turning content into questions is that it is an excellent way for deep processing to take place. Okay, and then once we have questions, we are curious by nature and we want to start looking for answers. So we start reading for the answers. And the purpose is to engage actively to read the text, to gain meaning and not just to skim through or passively glance over it. And then once we've got answers to our questions, we start retrieving those answers by putting it in our own words and the purpose of this is to retrieve the information from working memory once we realize we cannot retrieve we go back to reading until we can retrieve and remember the work and put in our own words and then we start recording the purpose is to record the content in your own words and in an organized systematic way and then when we get to rehearsing the purpose of this is to stimulate deep processing by critically probing for gaps and making sure that you have mastered all the questions in this section. If you cannot rehearse then you can also go back to reading, uh, retrieving, recording up to rehearsing all over again. So in this section we're just going to look at survey, question, and read. So Firstly, we're going to look at surveying. You can go to your textbook page 211 and 212. And I'm going to demonstrate on these two pages how to survey. So in your guided notes, you have a note like this. We're going to be looking at headings, subheadings, pictures, words in bold, and side notes. Okay, so firstly, we know that the heading is stationary waves. Let's look for any subheadings. So we see there there's moving from moving from st to stationary nodes and antinodes and formation of stationary waves. And we write that in there. Next, we'll be looking at pictures. So there is four figures there and we write down the information. Okay, words in bold. There is stationary waves, nodes, antinodes. We've got constructively principle of superpositioning destructively and write them down and in side notes if you look at the introduction part the bridge that broke spoke about um, the Tacoma narrow bridge in Washington and how it broke so the side note is just the hitting the bridge that broke okay so now it's your turn to try what I want you to do is I want you to go through page 213 to 218 and I want you to do something similar um, you can treat the boxes the orange boxes as side notes and then I want you to fill in your own table you can pause it's in your guided notes and we'll continue from there okay welcome back now you filled in this is how mine looks like and we'll take it from there Okay, now we're going to go to questioning. So I'm going to demonstrate this to you. I take my section on the first two pages and I'm going to turn these into questions. We'll notice that there are some things that repeat itself. 
um, nodes and anti nodes we've got stationary waves so we don't have to make double questions on them but we can use them to our advantage to ask different types of questions so the first thing if we look at the heading what is a stationary wave subheadings from moving to stationary okay oh there's another question that might pop up with the heading how is a stationary wave produced okay and then subheadings okay how does moving waves differ from stationary waves okay if we look at nodes and anti nodes how does nodes and anti nodes form you can ask any other question that you could think thought of okay formation of stationary waves how is stationary waves produced so now i realize hey there is actually a subheading for that heading question that i had next to the heading so i can remove that and just put it there okay if we look at the pictures okay about the slinky spring how can a slinky spring be used to generate a stationary wave if we look at the different wave patterns okay how many different stationary wave patterns are there if we look at the fixed ends of a long spr uh, spring must uh, for long spring must be nodes in a stationary wave then how when will the stationary wave pattern start with the anti-node in what situation will that happen and then if we look at the principle of superpositioning how is the principle of superpositioning of waves used to determine the resultant displacement okay and then if we look at the words in bold once again we don't have to repeat what is a stationary wave we can ask ourselves what is a node what is an anti-node what is the principle of superpositioning how does standing wave combine destructively and how does standing waves combine constructively and then the side notes the bridge that broke why did the uh, Tacoma uh, narrow bridge break okay so now it's time for you to try I want you to take your questions and turn them or your statements and turn them into questions you can pause the video and then you'll get back as soon as you've finished okay so here's mine uh, and yours will definitely look different from mine your questions would look differently from mine the emphasis not having the right questions but the emphasis is more on just having questions to help you read and process okay so i turned mine all into questions you will have noticed that over the observing of stationary waves i just made one question for that box and said how i could observe stationary waves um, so yeah there's a few questions that you could ask you can pause compare your questions to mine and then we're going to go to the next phase okay so we're going to read now in this demonstration i'm not going to do the whole thing for you but i'm going to show you how to start reading so you look at your first question this is now the question that i had no this is your questions and you will go to the um the first so let's say we say what is a stationary wave you will go to the book and you will start reading until you find an answer for that question then you go to the next one how many how does moving uh, waves differ from stationary waves then we'll go back and we'll start reading until we have an answer for that one so you go question by question read through the content until you have an answer and you might even want to refer to other sources if you can't answer your question um, and if your question is irrelevant you may change your question um, but the idea is here to read and answer each question in your head we're not writing it down yet just to be able to describe the answer in your own words okay so then i want you to do that for mine and for yours and be able to answer all these questions that we have now discovered in these few pages okay so you go through your notes you read page by page until you have an answer for each question okay so i hope that helps it's an interesting road of discovery and i believe that after this strategy has been implemented you would understand this chapter better have a nice day and uh, yeah, enjoy.